Welcome dear learners in this video of this photochemistry second we will discuss some important concepts such as Jabalowski diagram, quantum yield, chemiluminescence and bioluminescence. Let us start with first Jabalowski diagram. This diagram is called as a Jabalowski diagram and this is very useful to explain various phenomena such as fluorescence, phosphorescence, intersystem crossing, internal conversion and radiation gas decay. So this diagram consists of different energy levels shown by S0, S1, S2, etc. So these are the singlet energy levels and D1 is called as the triplet energy levels. So initially electron is present in ground state that is denoted by S0. Upon absorbing the radiation, this electron from ground state excited to s1 excited state from s1 it get excited to s2 excited excited state and so on this is called as excitation of the electron by absorbing energy now the electron from different singlet excited state or different uh, excited singlet excited state comes to its adjacent lower energy states that is called as internal conversion it is denoted by ic internal conversion when electron from s1 comes to ground state that is called as fluorescence sometime singlet excited state is converted into triplet excited state by change in the spin of the electron that is called as isc or intersystem crossing now from triplet excited state electron comes to ground state via emission of the radiation that is called as phosphorescence. So these are the some phenomena. Now let us discuss one by one. So when molecule absorb a photon of energy, electronic transitions occur such as S1 or S2 or SM. A molecule in S1 state, molecule in A molecule in singlet state undergoes following four different decay processes. In that first, fluorescence. Emission of a photon to de excitation from singlet excited state to a ground state is called as fluorescence. Fluorescence decay rapidly after the excitation force is removed. So as soon as the excitation source is removed, fluorescence stops. The lifetime of fluorescence is only 10 to the minus 5 to 10 to the minus 8 seconds. And the example of fluorescence is gemstone. So this process is shown with the help of this reaction in which S0 is the single excited state. S0 is a ground state up to absorbing the radiation. H mu it get converted into S1 singlet excited state. So from singlet excited state, it comes to ground state S0 by emission of photon denoted by H mu F. So this emission of radiation is called as fluorescence. Next, phosphorescence. Emission of photons due to de excitation from triplet excited state to singlet ground state is called fluorescence. Fluorescence may continue for some time after the removal of the excitation source and the lifetime for phosphorescence ranges from 10 raised to minus 4 to 10 raised to 4 second and the example of fluorescence is stickers, toys, etc. Now this process is again shown with the help of a uh, reaction in which S0 denotes ground state of the electron after absorbing energy denoted by H mu it get converted into singlet excited state S1 and from S1 it is converted into triplets excited state via intersystem crossing due to the change in electron spin. 
and from triplet the electron comes to ground state via emission of a photon denoted by h mu p so this h mu p is used to denote the process that is called as phosphorescence now this slide give us useful information about differences between fluorescence and phosphorescence so the first point of difference is the definition fluorescence emission of the photon by an excited excited electron during the de excitation from a singlet excited state to singlet ground state is called as phosphorescence while emission of a photon by an excited electron during the de excitation from triplet excited state to ground state is called as phosphorescence the example of fluorescence is gemstone jellyfishes while the example of phosphorescence is sticker toys bulbs etc fluorescence decay rapidly after the de excitation source is removed while phosphorescence may continue for some time after removing the excitation source lifetime of the fluorescence is very small while the lifetime for phosphorescence is large compared to fluorescence non radiative processes we have two types of non radiative processes internal conversion and inter system crossing let us start with the first internal conversion denoted by ic during internal conversion spin multiplicity of the state remains same while inter system crossing the molecule may undergo spin inversion to the triplet state that is spin unpair by a process a radiation less process so these two processes are radiation less so shown with the help of this reaction see here singlet no, sorry this is a ground state ground state absorbing elect uh, by absorbing radiation get converted into s1 and s1 is converted into t1 so during this there is a change in multiplicity therefore it is called as inter system crossing while s2 to s1 this conversion of singlet excited state from one state to another state with without change in multiplicity is called as internal conversion denoted by ic next important point is the quantum yield or quantum efficiency to compare the number of quantum of energy absorbed with the number of reacting molecule a term called quantum efficiency or the quantum yield phi has been introduced the definition of quantum yield is it is simply the ratio of number of molecule reacted and the number of photon absorbed at the same time therefore we can write a formula for this quantum yield phi is equal to number of molecule reacted in a given time divided by number of photons absorbed in same time if a reaction obeys the stark einstein law one molecule is decomposed per photon and therefore quantum yield phi is equal to 1 when two or more molecules are decomposed per photon the quantum yield phi is greater than 1 and the reaction has high quantum yield when the number of molecules decomposed is less than 1 per photon the quantum yield phi is less than 1 and the reaction has low quantum yield therefore if the stark einstein law is strictly obey then the quantum yield phi must be equal to unit or 1 so there are some problem based on this concept of quantum yield 1 into 10 to 5 moles of product pair form on absorption of 6 into 10 to 7 ergs at 3600 angstrom calculate quantum efficiency so according to our formula quantum efficiency phi is equal to number of molecule reacted divided by number of quantum absorbed so 1 into 10 to minus 5 moles of molecules were formed on absorption of 6 into 10 to 7 arcs okay so uh, this much amount of 
energy is absorbed okay so number of molecules reacted is equal to 1 into 10 to minus 5 into Avogadro's number so the answer will be 6.023 into 10 to 18 molecule now energy of one quantum is equal to h mu or we can write hc upon lambda and that is equal to we know the value of hc and lambda is given if you put all these value convert lambda from angstrom into meter it will be 3600 into 10 to minus 8 meter sorry 10 to minus 8 centimeter right so uh, after solving this we get the energy of one quantum is equal to 5.0 into 10 to minus 12 now total energy absorbed is equal to 6 into 10 to 7 arcs that is given and this is the energy of single quantum one quantum so by dividing the total energy by the energy of one quantum then we get answer 1.2 into 10 to 19 and that is total number of quantum absorbed therefore quantum efficiency phi is equal to total number of molecules reacted divided by total quantum absorbed and after solving this we get answer 0.5 therefore quantum efficiency for this process is 0.5 now one more problem is here a certain reaction absorbed 3 into 10 to 18 quantum of light per second on irradiation for 20 minutes 0 0.003 moles of reactant is found to be reacted calculate quantum yield for the reactions so according to our formula quantum yield phi is equal to number of molecules reacted divided by number of quanta absorbed so number of molecules reacted is equal to 0 0.003 into Avogadro's number that is 1.8 into 10 to 21 molecule. Now number of quantum absorbed is equal to 3 into 10 to 18 into reaction time is 20 minutes. So 20 into 60 that is equal to 3.6 into 10 to 21. Now by dividing number of molecule reacted by number of quantum absorbed again we get the answer same 0.5 is the quantum yield same problem is there you may read this and after solving this problem by same way we get the answer 0.625 one more problem is there for practice purpose which quantum efficiency is 0.669 now this is all about quantum yield or quantum efficiency now we will discuss next process that is called as KME luminescence. Luminescence is the spontaneous emission of light by a substance not due to the heat. So it is thus a form of cold body radiations. It can be caused by chemical reactions, electrical energy, subatomic motion or stress present in the crystals it is the reverse of photochemical reactions photochemical reactions result from the absorption of light while chemical luminescence results due to the emission of light from the chemical reactions so this is uh, represented with the help of this reaction a gives b star excited state is converted into b product and it give it emits some radiations in this way, uh, a chemi luminescence is explained. So, light emitted due to some chemical reaction is called as chemi luminescence. An example is very famous example: white phosphorus glow in air with faint greenish color, and that is due to its oxidation. Phosphorus oxidizes to phosphorus triacetate P2O3, and it exits into the dimeric form. P4O6 oxidizes to phosphorus pentoxide P2O5. Okay, so this is shown with the help of this reaction. Phosphorus react 
with oxygen it gives p4o6 and this p4o6 emits radiations so this is called as bioluminescence now bioluminescence so na name itself indicates if the luminescence is observed in a biological system then it is called as bioluminescence example light emitted by glow worms some species of mushroom and fishes shows bioluminescence example luciferin a type of protein in insects in the presence of enzyme luciferase and magnesium 2 plus undergoes oxidation to oxyluciferin and co2 this oxyluciferin gives light and show bioluminescence in fireflies so this is the mechanism behind the emission of light by fireflies or it is due to oxidation of a protein luciferin now photosensitized reaction so here photosensitization is the process of excitation of a molecule by energy transfer from an excited molecule in this process a donor molecule denoted by d first absorbs a quantum of light and forms an excited molecule d star the excited donor molecule then transfer its excitation energy to an accepted molecule a in the ground state in order to excite it this can be explained with the help of following reaction sequence so the first step is a light absorption by a donor it is denoted by d so it get converted into excited state denoted by d star and during sensitization this d star that is light sensitive material transfer its energy to the reactant a and then reactant is converted into excited state and donor atom get released as it is the donor molecule is called as sensitizer the excited accepted molecule a star could take part either in photochemical reaction or in photophysical processes some peroxides are used as a photosensitizer in many photochemical reactions now example of this photosensitization a well known example of photosensitized reaction is photosynthesis in photosynthesis chlorophyll acts as a photosensitizer chlorophyll and other plant pigments acts as a photosensitizer in the synthesis of starch from carbon dioxide and water a simplified reaction sequence is shown below chlorophyll plus light excited state chlorophyll this chlorophyll transfer its energy to six mole of carbon dioxide and six mole of water that will be used glucose plus oxygen plus chlorophyll so this is shown with the help of this diagram now phototherapy this is a very important phenomenon phototherapy is a treatment with the light it's sometimes used to treat newborn jaundice by lowering the bilirubin level in your body body blood so the process called as photooxidation photooxidation adds oxygen to the bilirubin so it get dissolved easily in water and excreted out in this way uh, the excess concentration of this bilirubin pigment is reduced with the help of light that is called as phototherapy next important point is phototropism this is a biological phenomenon in phototropism the orientation of growth of the plant towards the direction of light is called as phototropism plant in a sunlight show more growth compared to the plant in the shadow this is shown in this diagram so in this way various biological phenomenon can be shown can be explained with the help of photochemistry so this is the important of photochemistry that's it for this photochemistry second thank you